So then we are back with more understandings from the time of the Second Tabernacle Services where we find the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Tzayelic lineage. So then we can understand the time of the end as per Yerushiahu the prophet. We find layers of understanding of the Spring Feast, the Aurum Feast, and also the returning of the cities of the Messiah laid waste for many centuries. As we read then Yerushiahu the prophet, we understand that this prophet was extremely important because not only he was then put to death by their own nation of Israel, but then he was explaining areas of changes that was taking place during his time and then the future prophecies, not only the future of the nation, but also over the entire world. As we read then Yerushiahu the prophet, not only we understand this point, but also when we link with Daniel. We find then in the 11th chapter of Daniel a link with the kingdom of the north, the kingdom of the east, and the kingdom of the south. Extremely important because the kingdom of the north, for instance, as we evaluate from the document of Daniel, it is pertaining of an area of this particular chapter where you don't have to know the Torah, but then as you understand these and the nations are obedient, they can gain a great deal of return from these not obeying the Torah. So let's evaluate what's going on. Daniel was then a great prophet. He worked under many kings. As during the time that he was performing his service for Darius, then you find sections of his prophecies also explaining situations and circumstances regarding with the kingdom of the north. So let's read a section of Daniel, the 11th chapter. Because this prophet was extremely important because he was then the minister of finances of Nebuchadnezzar the king, then the Middle Persians, and then he was able to get very precise information concerning then the Gentiles and how the government of the Gentiles was going to work then in the future. So let's understand what it states. And also their gods, speaking of Egypt, and also their gods and molten image was then obviously placed aside for some time or going into exile. And then Egypt is going to be the standing from the kingdom of the north. So we understand then later on the sons of Ishmael they are going to gather in Egypt. Now, since these instructions are extremely clear, the only situation the system can work, and work favorably, on behalf of the Kingdom of the North, is then visiting with the President of Egypt and making a deal regarding arms. Not talking about what went on in September of last year, and prior years. We are talking of this specific time and season where then the Kingdom of the North gives arms then to Egypt. And then the flow of situations and events and circumstances related with ISIL then also gets resolved. So there is a reason why the Ishmaelites have decided to lower down the price of oil. And obviously the Kingdom of the North is in the midst of a somewhat dangerous crisis because of the price that's so low. But the point of the situation is the oil is then low because the Soviet Union must produce arms. And once they do this they're going to become extremely wealthy. Because let's make sure when we are in line with the Holy Instructions as far as Daniel the eleventh chapter, these nations involved with the flow of events, they don't have to know the Torah. The only point is they have to understand the flow of events based from what the prophets have stated it. 
So then the Soviet Union, as they produce more arms, and then they do the e-trade, or then trade, linked with China, and they do deals, and they make deals regarding arms, then they are going straight forward. So the Soviet Union is not a side. They are very in the midst of it. The only point is, they should make sure they don't get tied up with oil only, but with arms. So let's understand then later on what takes place. And then explains then the sons of Ishmael. They're going to have a, a war over there going on with Egypt. Then later on, they come together as one force and then they march further south. But then as these taking place, then explains the section regarding then the Soviet Union. Then explains, and the kingdom of the north shall rise a greater host than the former, and at the end of times shall come with a great army and much equipment. It's explaining precisely of the kingdom of the north. Now, as far as is, later times, we are speaking then the combat of the end. It's not the Soviet Union only coming by itself with a great army and much equipment. It's explaining the Soviet Union is providing equipment for the armies of the end of times. So because of these, the only way out of the crisis in the Soviet Union is then obviously producing arms. But then the first great customer must be Egypt. So then the sons of Yishmael, then they can make a straightforward motion on their behalf. Then Syria gets taken care of, Libya gets taken care of, and the world lined up itself in order for China to link them up later. So the situation is somewhat simple, but then we must become obedient and do what the instructions as far as Daniel is explaining. Now for these you don't have to know the Torah. If you want, it's up to you. Now as long as these truly gets done, then the nations are in line and then they shall to receive the system of China so they can have more returns. And China already is in front of the United States as far as its trade is concerned. So truly we are living in great times and then we know for sure the Soviet Union will produce arms in Lithuania for instance that got themselves mixed up with the Eurozone it won't work. For sure it won't. Because China had to go then to the Eurozone and Germany and those countries to save the Eurozone and it's not going to work. And then the Soviet Union must gather a greater host than the former. So you can understand what it was back then some 40 years ago or so must return. So let's wait for the next development. So please stay tuned. Much more coming up.